Hey everyone, Chef Jeff here. Today I'm going to show you how you can capture analog sensor data using an Arduino Uno. Send that data via, data via serial communication to your computer by using CoolTerm, which is an open source uh, serial monitor that can capture data to a text file, which you can then import into Excel and then process data. So in this example, I'm using a photoresistor as my analog sensor. That's just a variable resistor that's sensitive to the amount of light shining onto it a 5.1 kilo ohm resistor. That could also be a 10 kilo ohm. It just changes the sensitivity and the values you get. I've got a ground connection here. That's gonna be zero volts. On the upside here, I've got the five volt connection. And these two resistors are in series, so they create a voltage divider. So with this blue wire going to A0, I'm measuring the voltage drop across this 5.1 kilo ohm resistor that's fixed. But that voltage drop is gonna change depending on the amount of light shining in that photoresistor. So let's dive into the code. I've already got this circuit set up that I'll demo here. First thing in the code we're gonna do is we are going to declare a voltage pin. So int voltage pin equals pin A0. We're also gonna declare a photo resistor variable. I'm just gonna set that equal zero to initialize it. And that's gonna store the values that I'm gonna get. Okay, in the void setup, this runs one time. I'm gonna start up my serial monitor. This is very important so I can start serial communication. I'm gonna put 9600 as the argument here. That's the baud rate or 9600 Hertz. And that's pretty typical for a lot of Arduino codes. You don't often need to go faster than that, but for certain applications, you might need to go at a higher baud rate. But for our purposes, we're gonna to stick to that baud rate. Now I could set up the pin uh, the voltage pin is an input, but all the pins in Arduino set up as inputs by default. So I'm gonna leave that pin mode argument out because it should already be an input. Awesome, now I'm gonna do analog read. And this has one argument, which is what pin do you wanna use? I have my wire hooked up to A0. I'm gonna save the data, the resulting output from my analog read function into the variable called photoresistor. Okay, so that's gonna capture the voltage as a digital value. It's a 10-bit analog to digital converter on Arduino Uno. So that would mean that we have zero to 1,023 total values that I can read, which correspond to the voltage range zero to five volts. So now I'm going to print out the data. Now let's do serial.println here, because what that'll do, it's like copying the photoresistor value, that will print what's inside the parentheses, photoresistor value, and it will then go to the next line as if I press enter or return. So it's just an easier way to look at the data. So we'll start here, see if that's working. We'll go up here to check the COM port, Arduino Uno COM 13, looking good. Upload the code. Okay, done uploading. Now I'm gonna to go to the serial monitor. We can find that up here, serial plotter and serial monitor, or under tools, serial monitor or serial plotter. We'll start with the serial monitor. Okay, looking good. So I do have my circuit here. Let's see if it's responding. Yep, the photoresistor is moving pretty nicely there. So that's looking good. Now this is moving very quickly. Um, let me just show you if we go to the serial plotter, pull that up. You can see as I move my hand up and down, it is recording all those values. Um, it's doing it very quickly, um, but I don't actually need to run that fast. So I could slow it down a little bit. All right, so here I'm gonna add just a short little delay. Let's do 10 milliseconds. We could do a higher than, higher than that as well, but I think it's a good starting point. All right, and then, um, yeah, the only other thing is, it'd be nice to have sort of a timestamp, and I wanna show you how you record multiple values. So in this case, I'm gonna add another value separated by a comma. So here I'm gonna do serial.print without the ln, because I want it to be on the same line. I'm gonna call the millis function. And the millis function is gonna give me an unsigned long output value. Uh, it's just gonna be the number of milliseconds uh, since the code started running, starting at zero, all right? So it's basically like a number of milliseconds, like a, like a stopwatch. Um, that's all it's doing. I'm gonna also separate out that millis value or milliseconds since the code started running uh, with a comma like this so that I can separate out the millisecond number from the photoresistor number. And note that the first two prints uh, do not have the LN, only the last one has the LN, because then it'll print the last value and then go to the next line. So let's go ahead and visualize this. I'm gonna upload the code. 
All right, done uploading. Awesome. We'll go up to the serial monitor. Looking good so far. Okay, very cool. So I got milliseconds in my first column and photoresistor value in the other one. Just to show you what I'm doing here with my circuit, got it over here. So I have my photoresistor, 5.1 kilo ohm resistor, and uh, just a couple wires hooking up, and the screen wire goes to pin A0. Now, if I move my hand up and down, we can see that that photoresistor value changes. I can also go to the serial plotter to visualize this, and I can see that the time value just keeps going up, but my voltage value is fluctuating there. All right, great. So, serial monitor is working great, um, and note that I'm on COM13. Your COM number will vary depending on your computer, but I can only have one serial connection at a time, so I have to be really careful about this. I like to make sure that the Arduino is communicating via serial, then I have to close any active serial connections. So I gotta close that out. And now I'm actually going to go over to a cool term to show you that piece of software. So for cool term, we're just gonna to go to Google, Google cool term uh, with one word, Roger Myers freeware website. I uh, made a really good piece of software here. It's available for Mac, Windows, and Linux. I downloaded the Intel 64-bit version right there. Now, I've already downloaded it. It is a .zip file, so you will have to extract it on Windows. Extract all right here after right-clicking. Then we go into the actual application right here. So let's open up cool term. Okay, now this is a really neat bit of software. Uh, what it does is essentially replace your Arduino serial monitor with this software, but we can also save the data file. So first we'll go to connection, then options. Okay, now here under port, I have to specify that I'm using the Arduino port. Now that COM number will vary. That's why you should double check it before you get into this program, but it did auto recognize it. So I click on that. All the defaults are fine for this example. So we'll click OK. Now when I click connect, I'll be able to see the same information I saw in the Arduino serial monitor, just in cool term. So here's connect. All right, looking good. So we got milliseconds and we got the data. As I move my hand over the photoresistor, get more or less light, we see that value shifting. So that's looking great. Now the really cool thing about cool term is we can use this to capture data very easily. To do that, we go up to connection and then we go down to file capture and we click start. And when it says that, it'll then ask me where I want to save the data. Then we'll start collecting the data. Then when I want to stop collecting data, I just go to connection, file capture, and stop. So I'll show you that here. Let's go to start. Awesome. I'm just going to go back to my cool term demo folder. And it creates this very long file. I'm just going to call it uh, demo reading readers. That works. And it's going to save as .txt or text file. So click save. Awesome. It does say down here now that it's capturing. Uh, some amount of information. Um, so it's looking good. We are receiving data. And I'll just stop there, let's say. So I go to file capture and then stop, right? And now it doesn't say capturing data anymore. So that's the basics if I use cool term. But let's pretend that we're doing a demo where I'm actually have like a noisy signal. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move my hand over like a sine wave over the photoresistor, and then we'll process that data in Excel. I'll show you how to do that. So let's once again go to File Capture, go to Start, and now I'm going to overwrite this demo readings file. Okay, replace it, and now I'm just gonna move my hand over. I'm just moving it over. Awesome. Capture a little bit of data. Very cool. All right, now I'm gonna stop it. We're gonna to go to File capture, stop. All right, great. So we have now successfully captured that data to a text file. Let's go find that. If we go over to cool term windows, and here are my demo readings right here. Just double click on that. And we can see um, this first value looks like it captured it early on. Um, so I could probably delete that one. Uh, there we go. And then all the other values look pretty good. Now note that this says 82 and that says 93. It's not exactly 10 milliseconds, but it's pretty close um, to 10 milliseconds. It actually took about one or two milliseconds. Uh, it was a, about one or two milliseconds too slow. Um, but the timing is, you know, okay. Like it's, it's decent. If you want more accurate timing, you'll have to do fancier things like creating a timing loop and being careful about your serial.prints because they all take a little bit of time to actually successfully print. 
But yeah, the data's looking great. I got the text file. Now let's go ahead and get this into, let's save it. Let's get into Excel. So to grab that text file, make it easy to process, I'm gonna make it a comma separated variable format or just in a native Excel format. Comma separated variable just means value, comma, value. It's an easy way to collect and interpret data. So we're gonna to go to file, open this PC. And now I'm going to go to my cool term demo. Okay, now I have to go down here. It says all Excel files. I'm gonna to go to all files. I'm gonna open up demo readings right there. It can open up text files. Now Excel will realize, it, this text import wizard will realize that um, you know, it's, it's a native text file. So I have to specify this part. So it is a delimited file. It's a comma delimited variable format. So I'm gonna select delimited. This is a preview of what it's gonna look like. I can see it's not actually successfully capturing the columns. And so that's where I need to go over. And I need to say that the delimiter is not actually a tab, that's a valid delimiter, but rather a comma. Now that I do that, note down here what it does, right? If I do tab, it just gives me all the values. If I uncheck that and click comma, it does separate out the values. And that's what we want, the comma separated variable format. So now I can just click finish and boom, there's my data. So. Um, now I can go ahead and do all kinds of data processing with it, open up another programs. But just for a demo here, um, let's go ahead and highlight a bunch of this data and then just plot it just to see what it looks like. All right, so we have the data in Excel here. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and label this data. So we'll call this time milliseconds just to help understand what's going on. This is gonna be, yeah, let's call that digital value bit. All right let's actually grab the voltage data as well so to convert to voltage oh to convert to voltage all we need to do is take this digital value from 0 to 1023 and we need to multiply that by 5 divided by 1023 boom there's our voltage data now to propagate that calculation all the way down through we just double click on this little box and there it goes all the way down. Um, we can also do things like find the mean, that kind of thing. But let's just visualize the data first. So I'm going to do that by collecting all the data. So a good way to highlight the data rather than manually dragging it is I can just click on the first bit. I can do control shift down. We'll go all the way down. Now I click control to highlight this bottom piece. And now I do control shift up to capture the entire voltage column. And then I just do shift down to give me just that data, okay? So control shift down and up can be your friends to select data quickly. So let's go to insert, let's go to scatter, and we'll click on this one right here, that'll work. So there's what the data looks like. Okay, now I can label it, I can do all kinds of cool stuff with this, but that's exactly what I was looking at before, a sine wave, basically me moving my hand over the sensor to kind of simulate a little bit of noise. Um, and the time starts just under 90,000 milliseconds and goes up to, you know, a little over 106,000. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's useful. But uh, really for this application, just for simplicity, I think we'll just look at the voltage itself. So go to control down, then I'll do control shift up, and then shift down. We'll select just that data. Now I can go to insert, same thing, and click on this chart. All right, so that's looking pretty good. But let's say that I'm trying to find the average voltage in some kind of noisy signal, for example. Uh, all I need to do, we'll create a mean column here. And I'll do equals, and we will say it's equal to the average. Double click right here. And now I just select the data I'm trying to average. So click on the voltage, control shift down, boom, and then press enter. All right, awesome, scroll up. The mean was 1.867. That seems about right. So about right here-ish. So that is what the data, and some of these were you know, a little bit higher than the others, but overall, that's what the average that we got. All right, so hopefully that video was helpful. You saw how to capture data from an analog sensor through the Arduino Uno, send that data via serial into CoolTerm, a great open source software that can then save a comma separated variable file format we can then import that text file into Excel or do other types of data processing software with it. So hopefully it was helpful and have a good one.